All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are down below if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. And apologies for any audio glitches with my mic, it's starting to fail after about eight years. So just a quick speed econ video here, sort of, on Vietnam. No real specific reason other than Vietnam just passed right around now the point of 100 million people for their population total, with the country likely to peak in the mid-110s. I've been calling roughly between 114 and 118. Their demographic structuring is still pretty good. It's not in the abysmal catastrophic collapse that some other countries in the region, like China, are, as Vietnam's birth rate didn't follow the usual Asia-slash-Southeast Asia trend of just of just continuing to plunge further and further down once it hit about two or around replacement level. Instead, for a while at least, their birth rate has actually stayed right around two. So although Vietnam will not get old in the same catastrophic way as some others, Vietnam will in a lesser manner get old. But the question is, will Vietnam, like Japan and South Korea did, get rich before it gets old? And the answer in Vietnam's case is absolutely yes. Vietnam is rocketing to the top, and things are not slowing down. Vietnam's setup is already great, and they've actually already passed a few key points economically, one being the number of employed people, or people earning money, and thus inevitably spending money, being roughly around, or better yet, more than half of their total population which is where you see fully industrialized, fully developed economies. There's some variance from country to country, obviously, but generally you'll find them in that area. Some examples being the UK, having 33.1 million employed people out of a population of about 69 million, thus about 48% of their population. Australia, having 14 million employed people out of a population of 26.2, thus being 53% of their population and the Netherlands having 9.7 million employed people out of a population of 17.6, thus being 55% of their population, which is the direction, for example, China looked like it was heading in. However, they are now going in the opposite direction, as they peaked in workforce at 760 million people or so, employed people that is, and as their population is aging out, they, or rather their workforce, has been collapsing, and last year in particular dropped by 13 million, and is now down around 730 or so, or at least at the start of this year it was, bringing the working percentage of their population from 53 down to 52, and likely dropping by the same amount this year, which would take them from 52 down to 51. So they're on the road of just shedding an entire percentage each year. And then for opposite comparison, a few in-progress rising nations and or nations that were but have economically stalled for differing reasons. You have countries like Argentina, where they have 13.2 million people who have jobs out of a population of 46 million, thus only 29%. Egypt, where over 28 million people have jobs out of a population of 105 million, thus being only 27% of the population, the same percentage as South Africa, where 16.2 million people have jobs out of 60 million people total in the country. Their whole economy is kind of in a self-induced death spiral. Vietnam has already reached the critical half-population point with their most recent monthly update being 51.2 million people employed across the country, being, as their population is about 100 million exactly, 51% of their population. Now, just as critically, if you look at what those people are earning, you see that wages in Vietnam have roughly doubled over the last 10 years or so, and if you extend that out to 25 years, you see that wages have increased by between four to five times what they were 25 years ago, or right around the start of the 21st century. And then, of course, obviously remember to factor in certain adjusting things, like 25 years is roughly the 2x devaluing time period for inflation. Or in other words, if wages in a country double over a period of about 25 years, they have effectively, in terms of value of what people can afford with that, of how people are living, 
actually not really gone up. They've effectively stayed the same, which is okay if you're an already developed nation, at least. If you're a nation that's trying to rise, then that's kind of bad. But in Vietnam's case, they have nothing to worry about there, as theirs have gone up by, you know, four to five times over the last 25 years, which is obviously several times more than the 2x required to beat out the pace of inflation. So Vietnam is absolutely doing excellent in that regard, along with various other factors like their export revenues, which just over the last 10 years have increased from $10 billion per month up to now usually between 30 and $35 billion per month. These last 10 years or so coming on the heels in particular of numerous countries and industries rapidly trying to move their production and operations of various things out of China. And one of the most favorable places that many of them have been choosing has been Vietnam. So that's a tripling of average monthly export earnings over the last 10 years or so. And compared to a full 25 years ago, Vietnam's export earnings were effectively pretty close to zero. So that is a, you know, 30x increase from what they were 25 years ago. Incoming capital for an investment is really good on their part, uh, especially last year really spiked up because of China continuing to get more and more unpredictable with their domestic policy stuff. Their economy as a whole itself, their GDP, has now as of last year exceeded 400 billion in its total size value hitting $409 billion in total, a doubling in size effectively from where they were 10 years ago, back in the early 2010s, they were at about 214, and being about 15 times the size that they were 25 years ago, back at the start of the 21st century, when their economy was only of a $27 billion size. And then several other things, several other vectors that people sometimes don't really focus on too much in economic analysis of stuff is various self-sufficiency aspects. As a country that can do a lot of stuff itself or has a lot of stuff itself resource-wise or both is inherently going to have a much easier time of things and is going to be much more steady. So this is where you start looking at stuff like does the country, in this case Vietnam, have its own steel production industry, its own steel mills, its own aluminum production industry, its own aluminum refineries, and or usually a good factor as well, its own automotive manufacturing industry domestically, regardless of whether it's just starting out or not, which Vietnam's is. However, Vietnam's is expanding relatively fast and actually even has quite a bit of interest from foreign markets as well. So the answer from those three critical things is yes, Vietnam does. And then in the Department of Actual Resources themselves, Vietnam has quite a bit on its own. It has plenty of coal and plenty of rivers to rely on for hydropower. It is food self-sufficient. Vietnam has plenty of bauxite ore, the ore that contains aluminum. Vietnam has rare earth deposits of its own. It likely has a fair deal of natural gas in the very shallow, very flat, non-sloping waters off its coast. Vietnam has a lot of fluorspar deposits on its own, fluorspar being a mineral that is critical to the process of refining aluminum. They have a fair amount of manganese, which is a critical additive to the manufacturing of steel. They have tungsten, they have tin, they have phosphate rock, which is critical for modern fertilizers, which are part of what allow us to grow so much food so quickly. And because so much of the country is either river deltas or formerly at some point Vietnam, either right at the surface or just underneath its ground, has more than enough industrial grade sand than it itself could ever use. I sand being the core bulk material of concrete. So putting everything together, Vietnam is actually well situated and barring any extreme events is going to do quite well in the future. But anyways, that is it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. You can also go subscribe to my Catch channel as well. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you. And I will see you all around next time.